Hi, it's Jeff Jarmus here from discoverdoublebass.com. If you want to learn the double bass, please go and check out our website. We've got plenty of video courses, uh, lessons, interviews, gear reviews, all sorts of things to help you on your journey. And today I'm joined by our orchestral tutor, the wonderful Joseph Conyers. Uh, so Joe, welcome, it's great to have you here. Thanks, happy to be here. Um, we've just been filming a series of lessons on orchestral excerpts. So obviously we've been talking about articulate, different articulations and <clears throat> bowings, and you were talking about scooping. Sure. And it was a concept that I found, yeah, it was just really great to hear about and I found really informative. And I was hoping that you could maybe give us a brief overview of, of, of what this is yeah, and, sure. and to share with people at home. Is that okay? Sure, yeah. I think the, uh, a lot of players, when they first play the instrument, they see these strings and they see it as one plane. So they, the idea is that we put the bow on top of the string and just move the bow across the top. Which works, and you can get a sound, a sound, whether it's a good sound or not, that's something else, but you get a sound when you just move the bow across the top of the plane. You can even do it at the appropriate speed, which is very important. Um, placement, weight, weight, weight spe speed, and placement of the bow will determine the sound. So, and it works. But I want to emphasize more the weight part, because the weight implies that we're dropping weight down into the string. If you're dropping weight down to the string, this is where I start to think about one of my favorite foods on the planet, ice cream. <laughs> uh, and scooping um, the sound out of the instrument. So uh, I was, if you look at the hair of a, uh, on your bow under a microscope, you will see these little hooks. And those hooks actually pull the string and make the string vibrate. If you wanna kind of get richness out of your instrument, don't think about just scratching the surface, literally scratching the surface, because <laughs> then you're literally scratching the surface on your potential of sound, but dropping your weight into the string and scooping, so as acting as if you were trying to play a string that's down here, but these strings are up here stopping so you. is it like this kind of scoop? Yes, is that, that is correct. So the, the, the U would be like this. Yeah, I see. So underneath you're dropping the, string. the weight Drop in. Drop the then... weight and then pull the sound out. Yeah. The same way you would scoop and then yeah. pull, uh, scoop the ice cream out. Yeah, so there's a tension throughout the... Uh, yeah, that's what you mean, because it's, it's different to just putting a, a U through the air. It's like there's actually resistance there. There's there? the but resistance like, and the pull-out. That's yeah. really important. So if you're doing a down bow, yeah. it'll be going through your first finger. Your first finger is the one that does the, the last scoop. So first finger, I'm scoop, scoop, all the way through the tip, to the tip of the bow. And then at the, at the um, tip of the bow, you start with the first finger, scoop down to the string, drop the weight, and then come out. So your first f finger is kind of directing the energy, is that, that what is you're correct. saying? That is correct. I mean, all coming from my back, technically originating from my feet, but that's a much longer lesson, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> coming from my back, through my arm, then to my finger, to transfer the weight, into, uh, um, through the string and um, down through the instrument. And you can really, con obviously, you're really controlling the bow beautifully and you're getting an even sound from, you know, heel to, uh, to tip and to... We can practice, tip. we can practice techniques like this in our scales and it's literally just literally going from frog, frog to tip. I'm scooping a little bit so I'm not making it legato, just yeah. to emphasize the scooping gesture. And really, Now, ultimately, to get the real sustain, you want to be able to scoop and then continue that sound going. But if you're playing like, a, uh, for example, in one of the courses we talk about Beethoven 5, oh. if you're playing um, the quarter notes from the scherzo of Beethoven 5, that's definitely a scoop and release. Yeah. Does it make sense? And it's literally, I'm not thinking about scratching the surface. I'm playing here and then pulling the sound out and then letting that sound resonate. That's fantastic. And have you got any tips about uh, allowing the weight into the string? Because I know that you're not pressing the string yes. with your right hand. Uh, yeah, is this, the, is this coming from the arm, from the shoulder? It's all coming, it's all coming from the arm. Now, I, I, I do this exercise. It's going to be hard to do it on myself. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how this works. I always say that playing the bass should literally be as difficult as it is to sit just like this. Okay. And the weight is all, your weight going down is how, <laughs> is, yeah. is, is, is all you need actually to get the sound out your instrument. And this is regardless of your size. You do not have to be a bodybuilder or yeah. a power lifter yeah. or someone who moves cars or trucks to be able to play the, play the bass. As a matter of fact, if you utilize your weight well, anyone almost of any size can, can get away um, with, with playing. And I'll show you why. If I were to drop the whole of my weight of my arm on the string, the whole of the weight of my arm, this is what, this, this is the sound you'll get. 
Literally, that's the whole of my weight. Now, most people would say that's too much. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so then what we're doing is managing the amount of weight we put on the string. So it, in which case, it requires no effort. We don't have to press. You should never feel like you have to get on top of this. One of the things that scares me the most is I see people get on top of the string and press. Because when you press, two things happen. One, you're forcing from your arm. But two, you're actually suffocating the, 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 the instrument from vibrating. You want the note to vibrate freely. So instead, just drop the weight in the string, find that sweet spot, and I, always call, I call this surfing, Jeff. Yeah. Once you right catch the wave, because this is a wave, uh, I think about the vibrations being a wave. Once you catch the wave, once you get it going, stay there and just ride the wave, just like a surfer would. Once you catch the wave, stay there. You don't see a surfer like <laughs> doing this once they catch the wave. They just ride the wave until you're, you're done with your, your bow. Joe, that is fantastic. I really appreciate you sharing that with us today because I thought it was just such a wonderful content. Just to finish quickly, favor ice cream? <laughs> Do you have a flavor? Ooh, ooh. I, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a minimalist. I like uh, vanilla, but I grew up in the South and butter pecan is pretty freaking good. Yeah. <laughs> I quite like a mint choc chip myself, but you know, <laughs> that's me. Listen, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks everyone for watching at home. And if you've enjoyed this lesson, you'd like to learn more from Joseph, please follow some of the links below this video where you'll be able to learn about his courses and particularly orchestra chops, which is something we've been working on this week where we look at orchestral technique and orchestral excerpts and bringing it all together in a way that only Joseph can. So <laughs> I'm sure you'll enjoy, enjoy that. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you all next time.